The following is an encore presentation of Everything Everywhere Daily. On May 19, 1946, André-René Rusimov was born into the world in Coulomy, France. At birth, he weighed 13 pounds or 6 kilograms. And from there, he only got bigger. He eventually topped out at 7 feet 4 inches tall, weighed 520 pounds, and became a worldwide phenomenon as a professional wrestler and actor. He is one of a few human beings to whom the adjective legendary can truly be ascribed. Today, people still speak of his incredible feats in awe. Learn more about Andre the Giant, the eighth wonder of the world, on this episode of Everything Everywhere Daily. This episode is sponsored by the Travel Photography Academy. In 2007, I sold my home to travel around the world. I bought an expensive camera that I didn't know how to use and took a bunch of terrible photos. Several years, a hundred countries, and tens of thousands of photos later, I had improved my photography to the point where I was winning national awards, being named Travel Photographer of the Year three times in North America. I created the Travel Photography Academy so you don't have to spend the many years that I did to improve your photography. Even though we can't easily travel right now, you can still work on improving your photography at home and in your own community. Just go to TravelPhotographyAcademy.com or click on the link in the show notes to start improving your photography today. As I noted in the introduction, Andre Rosimov was a very big baby. He was born in rural France to parents who were farmers. He grew up very quickly. By the age of 12, he was already 6 feet 3 inches tall, or 191 centimeters. At the age of 14, he finished school, as that was the end of compulsory education in France at the time. He spent the next several years doing manual labor on his family's farm and at a local factory. In 1964, at the age of 18, he moved to Paris, where he met a professional wrestling promoter who thought that André would be perfect for wrestling. Needless to say, he was right. He began wrestling in France under the name the Giant Fier, in reference to a French folk legend. He then began working all over the world where he would be the main attraction. He worked in Japan, Canada, Germany, the UK, and the US under the name the Monster Rusimov. In 1971, he met Vince McMahon Sr., president of the World Wide Wrestling Federation and the father of the current WWE CEO, Vince McMahon Jr., McMahon suggested that he change his ring name to Andre the Giant, a name which he used for the rest of his life. He also suggested changing his persona to a lumbering giant. If you've seen video of Andre, it was probably from the mid to late 1980s when he was much slower and couldn't get around very well. However, in the early 70s, he was actually extremely athletic. It was also around this time that Andre was diagnosed with a condition which made him so large, acromegaly. His pituitary gland basically overproduced growth hormone, which is what made him so big. They quickly learned how to sell Andre. When Andre wrestled in Montreal, he would sell at the arena. People came just to see him because he was so large. However, almost anyone they paired him with was utterly unconvincing. Even the biggest wrestlers looked tiny next to Andre. Eventually in Montreal, crowds stopped coming because Andre was no longer a novelty. That was when Andre began an extensive travel schedule. At the time, professional wrestling was a regional business. A promotion might only work in a few states, and their television shows only appeared in a few markets. As there wasn't an internet, most people were clueless as to what was happening around the country, and certainly not in other countries. When Andre came to town, he would always sell at arenas. Andre was a special event. As a result, he almost never lost, and he almost never won any championships. He didn't need to win a championship because he was popular and could sell tickets without one. It was living on the road and traveling between towns that the legend of Andre the Giant was born. It's hard to express on a podcast just how big Andre was. Andre was 7'4 or 7'5 at his tallest. If Andre had played in the NBA, he would have been one of the 10 tallest NBA players in history. But he wasn't just tall. He was big. Many of the extremely tall NBA players in history were also very skinny. See Manute Bowl or Sean Bradley. Andre maxed out at about 550 pounds. When he was in the ring, other wrestlers who were otherwise large, burly men would be treated like rag dolls by Andre. 
Even though the matches were predetermined, Andre could still beat you up pretty bad in the ring if he didn't like you, and there wasn't much he could do about it because he was Andre the Giant. Andre's size was an issue when traveling. Nothing fit him. When he flew, he had to take up two seats in first class just so he could fit. All of the beds, showers, and toilets were too small for him. He literally couldn't go to the bathroom in most airplanes. When he was in Japan, taxis would often refuse to give him a ride. One time, he hit around a corner while another wrestler hailed a cab. When it stopped, Andre came out and the cab driver started yelling, No, no, no. He tried to drive off, but Andre picked up the back bumper of the car, preventing him from going anywhere. He was once scheduled to be in a match with a real boxer named Chuck Wepner. This wasn't a predetermined match. It was intended to be a real fight, and he was a heavyweight boxer. During the match, all he could do was throw ineffective punches at Andre until Andre became annoyed. Then Andre picked him up and threw him over the top rope to end the match. People would stare at Andre everywhere he went. One of the things he enjoyed about wrestling was being backstage where nobody would stare at him. One night at a bar, a drunk guy wanted to fight Andre. He didn't want to have any of it, so he even offered to buy the guy a drink. The guy kept coming at him, so Andre picked him up by the collar and the belt, threw him across the room against the wall, and broke several of his ribs. He went to dinner with Arnold Schwarzenegger once when Arnold insisted on paying. Arnold got up to pay at the front desk when Andre literally picked him up and brought him back to the table saying, I pay. As impressive as the stories are of Andre's size and strength, the stories all his wrestler friends tell are about his drinking. Andre the Giant might have been, without any exaggeration or hyperbole, the greatest drinker in human history. These stories aren't just a few urban myths that are unconfirmed. There are dozens and dozens of people who all have different stories of Andre the Giant over the years that all share the same basic theme. Whenever people went drinking with Andre, they would document the amount of alcohol he consumed because it was so much. Andre would consume on a daily basis about 7,000 calories of alcohol. He said it took him two bottles of vodka just to get warm. Hulk Hogan reported that Andre once consumed 108 beers during a layover at the Delta Lounge in the Tampa airport. During a bus trip in Japan, Hogan said he consumed 12 bottles of French wine within three hours. On a flight from Chicago to Tokyo with Ric Flair, he drank all of the vodka on the plane. On a flight from Miami to Dayton, Hillbilly Jim and Andre drank 56 tiny airplane bottles of vodka on the short flight, and Andre drank 50 of them. Gerald Briscoe confirmed that Andre would drink six bottles of Portuguese wine before he had a wrestling match. One night, there was a last call from a bartender, so Andre ordered 40 vodka tonics. The bartender just gave in and stayed until Andre was done drinking at 5 a.m. He stayed in England at a hotel for a month and racked up a $40,000 bar tab. Perhaps his most famous bout of drinking was when he went out one night with wrestlers Mike Graham, Dusty Rhodes, and Michael Hayes. All three men confirmed that Andre consumed 156 beers that night. Andre once fell on a man in New York when he was drinking. After that, the New York Police Department would have an undercover officer follow Andre when he went out drinking, and Andre would buy the cop drinks. He once passed out in the lobby of a hotel. The hotel didn't know what to do, so they put velvet ropes around him and let him sleep. He took his co-star from the Princess Bride, Carrie Hughes, out drinking one night. At one of his favorite bars, he ordered the usual. His usual was a pitcher filled up with every form of alcohol the bar had. The pitcher fit in his hand like a drinking glass would fit in most people's hands. He called his drink the American. One of the reasons why Andre drank so much is that he was in constant pain. Once he entered his 30s, his size began to cause problems. He had constant pain in his joints and back. By the time he was on the set for the movie The Princess Bride, he couldn't hold the 110-pound Robin Wright in a scene. They had to use a harness because his back hurt so much. Andre was undefeated for 15 years wrestling in the United States and Canada. By 1987, Andre's physical condition had gotten worse and he knew that his career was winding down. At WrestleMania three in Detroit, in front of the largest indoor crowd in history, Andre lost to Hulk Hogan, passing the torch, and mostly ending his career. He still did a few matches and made some appearances after that, but it was never the same. 
In January 1993, while attending his father's funeral in France, he passed away at the age of 46. The cause of death was believed to be an excess of fluid around his heart. He was the first person inducted into the WWE Wrestling Hall of Fame. While there have been other wrestlers since then who have come close to his size, no one has ever been able to really replace him. Billy Crystal wrote the movie My Giant based on his friendship with Andre. It's hard to believe it's been almost 30 years since Andre the Giant passed away. He was such a singular and unique person that the stories about him are still shared by people who've had the pleasure of meeting him. Their stories keep alive the legend of Andre the Giant. Executive producer of Everything Everywhere Daily is James Makala. The associate producer is Thor Thompson. Remember to leave a five-star review to get your review read on the show. They can be left at Apple Podcasts, Podcast Republic, or wherever you listen to the show. Also, you can help support the show over at Patreon.com. Patrons can get merchandise like t-shirts and hoodies, as well as having direct access to provide suggestions for future episodes.